good evening ladies and gentlemen now uh, previously we have discussed about the different topics like metamorphism or metamorphic theory direction and etc etc now the what are the rocks made of the rocks are made of, of different types of plastic or elastic materials like minerals and solids and crystals and etc etc uh, sometimes the rocks do melt and sometimes they create some fluid sometimes depending upon the it also depends upon the rheology how the rock is going to melt or not how they are going to behave as well as <coughs> the different aspects of the rock have been have been taken different experimental studies like how they should behave like in subduction zone or in uh, meditation range etc etc however we have known from peculiarities of the rocks and the glaciers that there are two types of geologies that can be seen in the rock that is one is viscous one is plastic one is elastic and uh, there are two types of convections there are types of convections they go through go in the mantle Separate types of phenomena that goes on, and to understand the rheological behavior of the rocks, now we will try to focus on a rheology which is known as elastic rheology, and most of the metamorphic reactions are taken as if they are elastic in nature, not plastic in nature, and that's why the stress strain curves are different differences are taken into account until the in the thermodynamic parameters that we have already that we have discussed or been discussing through our lectures <clears throat> now elastic rheology means that the elastic rheological behavior is a term observed only below a threshold stress that is up to the elastic limit of any material that is if you increase the stress it will provide you some strain and when you release the stress, the strain will be gone from the mineral or the rock, whatever it is you are, you are trying to focus into. And it is a function of temperature and pressure. Now, the elastic materials have some properties like that is strain is recoverable. Strain will develop instantaneously after the classic, after, after the application of the stress and strain at any point of the body will have linear relation to the stress applied that is if it is a graph and it's a, like you are trying to use that stress versus strain then the stress or the strain because of the stress will be linear up to a certain point of pressure or temperature and <clears throat> there will be a critical stress below which these conditions will apply now graphically if we try to represent that a cylindrical solid material if we take it a material like this And if you try to analyze this is the elongation and applied stress is this or in these directions. This is elongation along this direction. This is this might be the compaction along this direction. That is, it is getting elongated in this direction. If you apply some stress, and it is getting compacted along this direction. Because the stress or application of the stress is happening, that the extension of the stress is going along this direction. Now we have seen from the development of different graphs that a 
in many cases that we try to build a circle or build a thing which is known as more circle and it will give you an idea of the breaking stress of any metal and there are some stress axes one is sigma 1 one is sigma 3 one is expansional stress one is compressional stress and at a particular point it will it is going to break that is what the limit of the elasticity uh, it is it is gone and before that it behaves in this matter in this manner and now notice that if you try to break this down in any individual mineral grain or mineral phase they will they will have their own elastic limit okay and as they have their own elastic limit the depending and it will depending depend it actually depends upon the composition as well as the crystallographic orientations like in case of the garnet the elastic limit is pretty high in case of quartz it is very low and this these things are practically these things actually can be correlated with the amount of the with, the, with what you see or what you observe under the microscope now suppose as an example the garnet will not uh, be broken down at around 400 to 300 degrees celsius in a viscous regime or it will not be at all deformed however quartz it will be getting deformed and it will get you some recrystallized grains in a smaller scale however and in case of a rock you take in an account of a rock it will act like elastic elastic elastically or plastically depending upon the pt composite pt condition of the temperature situation that you give now this is if we this is the solid material we are taking and it is subjected to axial load sigma 1 and material shows some elastic behavior its length will be strained by an amount e1 suppose in this diagram the elongation is e1 and which is proportional to the applied stress on removal of the load it instantly regains its original length and this is very important in terms of a in terms of a physical or geophysical aspect or structural or metamorphic aspect because wherever a material is is seen to be deformed the deformation most of the times cannot be or does not actually uh, is being recovered and it stays and it's it's a question that why or how rather should we or would that should that go into the elastic limit of that now it instantly begins the original length that this linear relationship between stress and the strain is known as the Hooke's law and the Hooke's law which is connected by the stress to the strain by a modulus which is known as Young's modulus that is E it is now uh, how they are limited, related there is stress and strain diagrams for the stresses below the elastic limit elastic limit is dependent on certain parameters and it may be of time slope of stress strain curve or spring constant of the young modulus according to the Hooke's law the isotropic elastic solids show a particular equation which is known as sigma ij is equal to lambda of epsa kk del ij plus 2 mu epsa ij now del ij it is known as it is a mathematical expression which is well known in the mathematics as a chronic delta k r o n e c k e r chronic delta and when i is equal to j del ij will be one otherwise it will be zero and lambda and mu this lambda and this mu they are known as lamy's parameter
Now it will be very important for you guys to notice that in case of a deformed terrain or metamorphic terrain, you will see the minerals being deformed, they are being diffusing from the grain boundary or inside the grain or inside the grain to the outside of the grain. Now this, uh, this parameter will, uh, whether to use this or whether to see the rock, whenever you are seeing the rock, each and every single individual minerals have their own set of responses with respect to a given stress. And that's why, like I have sh 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 told you that the garnet which might, might, uh, which might take very little amount of deformation where the quartz might might get a huge amount of deformation like we have seen high temperature tenants where the quartz might form rebounds or like subgrain rotation however the garnet might st stay in its robust state and this creates a, an, a real idea that how different minerals behave differently and within the earth as you know that there is a huge range of mineralogy that can be observed and those mineralogy or the minerals they change and it's a real problem for practical physicists to understand this and to understand art in a more better fashion that's why the research is going on and now rigidity modulus that is lambda del plus 2 mu e that is known as a rigidity modulus and if so, if so to the, the, they are the volumetric change and where tau is taken and because strain in is a non-dimensional term there is a uh, because strain is known as del L by L and the and the, the whatever you call it the dimensions will be cancelled from the denominator as well as the multiplier modulus exposed in the SN dimensions of the stress as a result the application of the stress the cylinder changes its shape and column this volume change is given by del is equal to e1 plus e2 plus e3 that is e1 plus e2 plus e3 in the third dimension which we, we actually cannot see right now now the cylinder suppose it is it is it is it is it is undergoing some contraction along this direction expansion along this direction and this lateral contraction longitudinal and extension is known as Ponceau's ratio that you have known from the physics that is e2 by e1 and for elastic solids we know that applied stress is equal to young modulus into e1 and so the Sigma 1 and Sigma 2 can be classified as that is if eta is equal to E1 by E2 that is a Ponceau's ratio and Sigma 1 B is equal to Young modulus into sorry into E1 then obviously Sigma 1 will be E into V E2 thus E2 will be sigma 1 by EV sorry 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 this is this is a uh, um, Then E one is equal to two by V into two by V sigma one. Then the 
very simple case. And now, as we have known, the picture A, if a shearing stress tau is applied, tau, which is equivalent to the tan of the angle of theta, Hydrostatic stresses can be accounted as sigma is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3. It is known as a hydrostatic stress. Now, mm, there is a constant which is 3D is used to describe this relationship and sigma bar is equal to k into the value of e differs greatly in some of the geologic 